Hello Internet and welcome to the tutorial in which I prove that I do these videos to answer your questions instead of driving tons of traffic. These three guys at the bottom of the screen are responsible for this tutorial and I hope they like it. I'm going to show you here how to scrub websites for good articles that you can use on an automated website. And whenever I am creating automated websites, I in essence do what you're going to see here today and then take the articles and the titles and the descriptions and so forth and send them to the Word WordPress Posty plugin that shoots them up onto the page. And so that you know this works, you can see here what I did was I jumped over to the Huffington Post and I chose the Huffington Post because I posted a poll on my website and I went to their comedy page, I grabbed the title, I grabbed the link to the original article, I grabbed the article itself for at least 800 characters of it, if that existed, and I grabbed the description, which you can see right here, which is a summary. Now, how I'm able to do this was I went to their RSS page, as you can see right here, and then I clicked to view source. And I figured out that their titles were surrounded by tags with the name title. The link to the original article started this text that you see right here. And the description summary is here. So what I'm able to do is go in, grab the title, grab the descriptions, throw that in, but then also grab the original article and take as much content from it as I want. And I'm going to show you how that operates. And then on top of that, once I was able to figure out how the RSS feed was structured, if I want to go in here and look for the tag that surrounds all the content, what I do is I just select the beginning of it, and then I hit View Page Source, and then I do a Find, in which I look for that. And you can see here, here is the article, and every single article starts with this tag, Class Equals Entry Body Text. All of this stuff is very important, and knowing how I did this, you're going to be able to do this with any website that has an RSS feed. So... I'm going to get into the code. You're going to have to go out and get a library. It's called HTTP Lib2. Google actually put it out, and you can get it quite easily by just typing in HTTP Lib2, like I did up here, and it's going to take you to the website that has it, which is, by the way, code.google.com forward slash p forward slash HTTP Lib2. And if you don't know how to install modules inside of Python, I'm going to show you right now. All you would do is type Python 3, if you're using Python 3, followed by whenever you download the actual library, the module that I'm paying reference to, there is going to be a file called setup.py that is downloaded. And you just simply go into your terminal and type this right here and hit enter and it automatically loads the said library into your modules inside of Python. And that will allow you to use this module. Then of course, you're going to import those two libraries. And if you haven't seen my Python tutorials or my regular expression tutorials, you are totally confused and you probably already left. But you definitely should watch those before continuing. Either way, going to create a main function down here. I'm going to create a variable called URL to get, and then I'm going to put in there the RSS feed location for said website. This right here is going to actually go out to the website, this line of code here, and it's going to download all of the content that exists at this location. Then this line of code right here is going to assign all of the content from said page to this variable called content. Then I'm going to convert content into a string and send it to the function that I called grab site tags. Jump up here, you can see here, this is the attribute, it's accepting that gigantic string. And here I am creating the regular expression like I have already talked about in previous tutorials in which I'm going to look for the tag's title. I'm gonna put a bracket around what I want to get, this opening bracket, this closing bracket. I'm gonna say I want all the characters between five to 90 characters in length that are surrounded by these title tags. I'm also stating here with this or tag that I also want between five to 300 characters that exist between the summary tags. That's gonna be the description. And last but not least, here I'm going to grab the link to the original article using the code that you see here on the screen. And all of this information is available at newthinktank.com, all this code. And I'm going to end this whole entire guy with the ignore case attribute, so it's not going to pay particular attention to any case changes. Then I'm going to run the find all function by passing it the regular expression for what I'm looking for and page to search, which is going to be the content from said website. I'm then going to cycle through everything that hit for this regular expression, and I'm gonna to print to the screen both the title, the description, 
and the link to the original article. I'm then going to pass the original link to the original article and it's stored in the second index. As you can see here, if we go down here, remember the indexes start at zero, so titles in zero, summaries in one, and two is the location of the original article. So I'm gonna send the location of the original article to this function called get the article. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna jump over to that page and it's gonna grab the original article for me and print that to screen as well. I put this if statement in here to make sure that the string that is sent actually contains information. And then I'm going to call the HTTP method, and it is going to get all the information from this new URL that is sent, and it's going to assign it to a new variable that also is called content. I'm going to convert all of that content into a string and then reassign it back to the variable called content. And here I'm going to create a new regular expression to search for. And in this, for instance, this is going to be whatever information that will define your page that you are looking for. So remember from the beginning of the tutorial, I said we're going to be looking for all of the text that lies between div class entry body text. And then the peculiarity of the Huffington Post is they normally have between 1 to 40 garbage characters, then followed by a paragraph tag. And then I, I'm stating here that I want to grab between 1 to 800 characters that is going to pay reference to the article itself. So instead of having that really short description on my automated website, I'm going to have an 800 character long article there. And again, I'm ignoring case. Then I call the find all function once again. I supply it with this regular expression I just created, and I also supply it with a string that contains all the text from the website that I am searching for. I convert all that article that I just pulled down into a string, and here I'm checking to make sure that this, the article is at least 100 characters long because I found with Huffington Post anything less than 100 characters is garbage, and you're going to find that with most websites. And then here, this is going to be specific to the Huffington Post or whatever website you're going to be pulling information from. I chose to use the replace method to replace common garbage characters that are found inside the Huffington Post. So for example, they Often in their articles, they have these extra backslash characters and quotes and so forth. So that's what I'm doing here with the replace method. I'm actually going in there and cleaning up the article and eliminating this new line character and a whole bunch of other garbage things. And yes, you can stack the replace method because I did it right here. And then I come down to else, and if the article is not 100 characters in length, I call the pass method, which just says to skip everything else that we're doing here. And then I call the return statement that returns me back up to the grab site tags function to continue processing the additional articles and titles and descriptions and so forth and so on. And then once I do that, I have my title linked to the original article the entire article up to 800 characters in length as you can see right there and the description and then normally what I do on the automated websites is I give them this title and I of course put this link back to the original article at the end of this article that I pull and I put the descriptions in there sometimes and sometimes I don't and on top of that I don't have it displayed here, and I did want to make this excruciatingly confusing I also often perform search functions on the titles to make sure the titles contain information that applies to the automated website that I use. So, and then all this information again gets sent to the Posty plugin and it gets displayed on the websites without me having to do anything. Occasionally these break, the regular expressions stop working if you do a, a whole bunch of these guys, but it really doesn't happen that often. That's just whenever they change the format, like the Huffington Post stopped using title in their RSS feed. Well, that would cause a lot of these things to break. And of course, there's many different ways that you can handle those errors that I've covered in previous tutorials. So I hope you enjoyed this rather complicated tutorial on how to scrub websites for good articles to use on automated websites. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.